Hello and welcome to The Hot Desk, WLR's business show. I'm Julie Smith. We've got a very busy show for you this week. Coming up, Waterford company Radius Technologies expands with the acquisition of a Cork company. I talk to director John Gleeson. We'll hear again from Conor McCarthy about investing in Waterford Airport. Encon's Conor Walsh on winning the regional final of Ireland's best young entrepreneur. But before all of that, Google were in town during the week to educate local businesses about how to use their tools to achieve digital growth. I spoke to their head of technical services, also Minister John Halligan and Waterford based company International Living's media buying director about how they've used Google to expand. First, here is Google's head of engineering and technical services, David Snedden. David, grow with Google. We're here outside the Theatre Royal for Google's digital skills training today packed attendance obviously a lot of people looking to know the secrets of google this is the first time you've held one of these specific regional roadshows what can people expect from the day well first of all i have to say the buzz and excitement is incredible i think we've been always based in dublin and i think now we're getting a lot better at reaching out around the country so it's really great to be here what can they expect? So first of all, I think they can get a sense of the kind of things that Google has to offer, particularly free online services. So if, if, if nothing else, it's just a very simple awareness raising thing. And then secondly, they'll get a chance to meet with people from Google, but probably more importantly, other digital entrepreneurs here in the southeast. And they get to spend some time, network, learn uh, and, uh, and hopefully take something back for their own businesses. Because you say digital entrepreneurs, but really all businesses now need to be considering digital and, and growing in that digital space. Isn't that right? That's right. I mean, I've seen the EU figures to say that about 90% of, of all new jobs created will be, will be somehow connected to, to digital. But look, it's, it's great to see that Waterford is investing in this space and making sure that the next generation, through the likes of WIT, through the likes of the Southeast Business Innovation um, Centre, through the likes of the Waterford tech startups. I mean, all of these entities and structures will all will all you know make Waterford more digital ready and precisely for the kind of skills of, of, of the future. And of course, being more digital ready and trying, I suppose, on a basic level from enterprises from the very smallest to the biggest, uh, ranking their pages on Google, learning how to do their SEO and their analytics and all of those things as well that can be, on the surface, seem quite easy, but in practice are, are quite difficult. Um, and that, of course, is something that, well, I mean, it's all about Google, really, isn't it? I mean, it, it is you are the biggest search engine. Um, so there is uh, a lot of information I'm sure people will be looking to get from you. There is, and they can, and they can hopefully find it, e- find it easily online. I think I'd probably point people towards some very simple solutions, though, one of which we call Market Finder. So if you have a business and you want to go outside of the four or five million people that we have here in Ireland and you want to reach the billions around the world, then uh, go to Market Finder uh, and you can actually find out what the potential of your business is internationally. So I think um, you know, it can, digital marketing can get very, very complicated, but one of the reasons why we're here in Waterford today is to try and actually present a face to the Google name, allow people to meet other Google people and other entrepreneurs, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and I would encourage people, if they have any international aspirations at all, to go to Market Finder, uh, which, actually, which is a, way, a deliberately simplified way to try and let businesses find out what the opportunities abroad might be. And of course, there is a link up with Enterprise Ireland here as well. I know they're involved in, in this event too. And they're all about Irish businesses trying to expand, looking to new markets. Very important to, in this, this global world. Do you have any maybe examples of how people can grow from other events that you've done and the success of them in, in helping business grow? You know, first of all, unfortunately, there's no one size fits all. There's no universal panacea. I think um, making sure that you that you try and find out what the potential for your business might might be abroad, being aware of things like logistics and taxes and payments and that kind of thing, all of which we we, we have on our various services, our, our market finder platform. I would just start with those with those simple things and just make sure that it's something that is the kind of works for you and your business. And then when you're ready to take that leap, then um, you can do it. And what about the business of Google then? Um, you're in Ireland now quite a while, uh, still growing? Yes, uh, we, uh, we've been buying a little bit more property in the, in the Barrow Street area, uh, working very closely with the local residents to make sure that, uh, that they're also comfortable with the scale of our development. And I suppose, you know, that we're also part of like, the kind of wider 
um, regeneration of that entire part of Dublin 4 with a lot of other tech companies in there as well. We are really proud um, uh, uh, participant in the Irish business scene. We've been here now for more than 15 years. Hope to be here for a lot longer than another 15. And including all of our extended workforce, we're now we're now number more than 8,000 people here in Ireland. So uh, we keep on growing, and we're really proud to be here. Um, and we actually hope that you know we hope to continue to thrive in the UK post Brexit. But we actually think that it'll be it'll mean even more opportunities for Ireland. Here at Google's Digital Skills Training in Waterford, Minister, why is an event like this important? Very important for Waterford. It's school's first opportunity to come outside Dublin and they've chosen Waterford. And one of the reasons why they've chosen Waterford is if you look at the history of Waterford, or SMEs or small to medium enterprises, they really do very well. And what we're trying to do is to drive uh, uh, technology uh, and work and jobs together going forward because innovation has taken a hold on society in a sense and businesses and so on and if you look at where innovation was 5, 10, 15 years ago where it is there and where it will be uh, in 10, 15 years time it will require businesses to have all the digital skills necessary uh, to, to compete to be competitors with our friends in Europe but also to compete with industries right across the world and you can't get a better organisation like Google in helping you because they are professional and it's great to see them here in water and it's also great to see Enterprise Ireland here. Yeah, I mean, and, and they're here to give lots of tips and advice to businesses which, which is great and I mean you mentioned the digital skills digital skills training obviously with your remit now with jobs and skills and training I mean how important is that how is that going to be pushed and promoted well you see like uh, the, the sustainability of any economy and the growth of any economy essentially disc- uh, depends on the skills of your workforce and uh, you know from, uh, if you, from the basic apprenticeship right up to high digital skills in uh, accountancy aerodynamics dynamics and so on. We need them like every other country has them. The only way we can do that is by growing skills and by, if you like, enticing young people uh, that either come from institutes of technology, university, but even from junior schools, from, from senior se- uh, secondary school, to have a look, for instance, in the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and maths. That's the big driving force for technology, uh, not alone in Ireland, but in the world over the next 10 or 15 years. And that's where we have to get our skills factor into those subjects. So what's the government doing in that regard? Well, the government are doing very well in innovation, as a matter of fact, that on the innovation scoreboard, we've gone from 26, 12, 9 to 8 in the last year. And we've invested huge money in innovation. Uh, For instance, uh, companies in Ireland in research and development have invested €2 billion last year. That's a fantastic and kind of a a great story to tell people that multinational companies have invested €2 billion. The Irish government have invested €800 And you have to remember, we're investing money like that coming from a really bad recession at the time. So overall, you nearly have an investment of €3 billion in innovation, research and development in Ireland. And that's one of the reasons why Ireland has gone right up in the rankings, right across the world, to be one of the top uh, innovators and one of the top innovation drivers in the world. And we're probably seeing that now in the, in the wider economy. We're seeing the economy doing well, uh, particularly in Dublin. On a regional basis and on a Waterford level, yeah. mm. we're still behind a little bit. I know their unemployment has come down, but we still are a little bit behind. So kind of locally, uh, what's the most important thing? Well, I think the big issue here is like, if you look at some of the big multinational companies that have come to Waterford and stayed put in Waterford, Teva Pharmaceuticals, Bosch and Lom, and they do a lot of the research here as well, and they depend on our researchers being available. So the message is is clear and I know Enterprise Ireland and the IDA are driving that message right across the world that Waterford is a safe place to come to, Waterford is geographically well placed to set up your business and also like you know we have multinational companies here in Ireland, multinational pharmaceutical companies that have chosen Waterford to set up their business or grow their business here so that's a good story to tell to other people and I will accept that uh, during the recession Waterford was really it it, it, it was affected a lot more than many other countries account our cities in Ireland but we have come forward we are creating jobs the unemployment rate still a little higher than it is in many other cities but dropping down substantially and I think that uh, we'll see uh, as the economy grows providing of course we're not adversely affected by Brexit I think as the economy grows you'll see the Waterford will grow as well. Minister of State for Jobs, Skills and Training, John Halligan there. Now, one company which has used Google's tools to great effect is International Living, which is part of the Agora Publishing Group, which has a base in Port Law. Sharon Hogan is the media buying director for International Living. 
Sharon, International Living, they're a company, uh, an international company, but you've been in Waterford quite a while, yes. isn't that right? So we're part of a larger group called Agora Publishing, um, but International Living has been here 20 years now, and um, we are a publishing group that help people across the world find out about living overseas, moving overseas, um, and travelling overseas. Um, our majority of our market is based in North America. So we have American, we have Canadians reading our publications every single day. At the moment, we have over 500,000 readers of our, our publications that go out daily. And then we have a monthly newsletter as well. So Google helps us reach those people. And we find that Google, we get leads from Google who are extremely, extremely qualified. They go on, they become, they come onto our file as a free name, just reading our free material. And But they are, they're really, really qualified. They go on to like buy our subscriptions. They they buy our products and then they travel to our events which happen around the globe as well. So when you were set up 20 years ago, I mean, there was no Google. There was no, or the, well, I mean, there was internet, but it was in its early stages. Absolutely. So, I mean, how has, and I appreciate you mean, I've been with the company the full time, but how has reaching your customers changed over the time? I've I've been with International Living for a long time, but um, I obviously I haven't been there 20 years, but I do hear stories. Some people are still there 20 years later and I hear stories about, you know, articles would come in and they have to be edited over faxes going back and forth and particularly with International Living we have um, 200 staff that are across the globe as well we have a big base here we have our marketing and we've got our editorial teams here but our writers are in those countries that we speak about so they're sending back kind of on the ground reports of what it's actually like to live there so I can only imagine what it must have been like to try to do business in that way we did it and it was slow and we got you know we got the information out there but this has just totally revolutionized the business yeah so digital has then let must be leading to huge growth and and how have you achieved that though how have you harnessed those tools we AdWords would be number one, like PPC. So going out there, um, someone might search into Google, uh, retire in Costa Rica. And what we want to be and what we strive to be every day is the expert in that field. So if they type that into Google, we want to appear first. We want to appear first with the best information for that person. Where Google is all about the user, we want to be all about the reader, our reader. And if we put our reader first, everything else will follow. And so that's what we do on a daily basis. We try to get that person in. That's the very, very start of the journey we get them in we give them the information that they were looking for keep it the best information and then we help that customer or that reader along their journey as well so we get them in give them the information they were looking for and then show them a, a world of other information that is relevant to them as well fascinating so you find then you mentioned AdWords so you're using the paid services what about any of the free services absolutely so we we have a big big organic strategy as well so our website and we have absolutely thousands and thousands of articles as I said we were going 20 years so uh, content is not a problem for us so again you know that's the paid side of things but if someone types it in as well we also strive to be number one on the organic list and we'll do that through following SEO good SEO practices um, and then hopefully our, our websites, the relevant articles will land number one on that spot. And is that something you need to keep on top of? Because the Google algorithm changes quite a bit too, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's the, probably one of the hardest jobs that you could have. Um, it's a constant, constant upskilling. And that's where, you know, where some of our staff are here today is to, to keep on top of that. Keep on top of the industry trends, what's changing with Google. Um, and then just, you're, you know, your competitors, we want to be the best. We're, we're trying to see what are they doing? Are we missing out on something? So it's a constant refresh. Something changes, our website has to change. So it's absolutely a never-ending, never-ending process. Sounds like you've grown a lot, but you're still growing. Yes. Um, and how, how many people are working with International Living now and Agora widely? So we, uh, International Living, have 47 people now. So, I mean, I started maybe about 15 years ago at this stage. And we're standing out in front of the Theatre Royal right now. But um, when I started, we were based in a, a small office down on Catherine Street. And so I think it was about maybe 15 of us at that stage. So we're up to 47. And that's just out in our beautiful campus in Port Law, out in Woodlock House. Um, 47 working for IL now. But there is also, there's about 200 people 
uh, employed out in Woodlock right now, which is we're all kind of part of the same family, if you like, uh, Gore Ireland Publishing. And so we have other um, companies there all under the same umbrella and they support not only international living, but they support all the other Agora affiliates across the globe. So we also have affiliates in Europe, in France, in India, in Japan most recently, as well as huge, huge campuses in Baltimore and across the States as well. So we're like the European headquarters. So we'd be very, very keen to make that known in Waterford, to celebrate that fact and to keep it Agora Ireland in people's minds. You know, we recruit for marketing, editorial staff, copywriting, really, really cool jobs, tech jobs. There's absolutely loads of opportunity there. So we'd be really, really grateful to get that out there. And we want to create an excitement and buzz about Woodlock and about Agora Ireland Publishing. Brilliant. Well, it was lovely to meet you, Sharon, and continued success to everybody out in Agora. Thank you so much.